Everybody, welcome back. My name is Yumble, and I'm here today to talk about Node Controller, a recently updated mod for City Skylines that gives the user a lot of control over their roads. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Yumble, my nodes are fine. What's wrong with my nodes? Everything's, everything's good. Why should I change? I'm going to give you a, a very strong case today as to why you should implement Node Controller in your city and how it can help you improve things visually and how it can help improve the, the flow of traffic in your cities. So the name of the mod is Node Controller. What we're looking at right now is a classic example of a node. The simplest example is a place where roads intersect. There's more to it than that. Really, every, every time that a road segment connects to another segment, each of these circles here are actually nodes. But let's look at this obvious one here. An initial application for Node Controller might be to expand this intersection. So what that actually does for you is gives, gives the traffic, instead of making this tight left turn, we can actually widen it up a little bit. Let me show you how that works. I've got a mod called Unified UI that kind of tucks Node Controller away. You can see it in the bottom left there. Kind of tucks it away until you need it. And this is Node Controller. It's, it's open. It looks like nothing except your, your cursor will say Select Node. And we're going to do that. Click to edit. So this is Node Controller. This is the, the actual interface. All of these green lines and yellow dots and, and colored sections here, as well as this panel, this node. Right now I'm editing node number 30, 3100, uh, 31,217. Place value matters, right? Um, that doesn't matter. But what, what we can do, let's, let's start with the simplest change that we can make. Each of these columns counts for one of the angles, one of the connections to this node, right? The all section is all of them. The red one is red, the blue one is blue, uh, greenish yellow there, and orange. So those all have their own, their own parameters here, including offset, shift, rotation, stretch, and marking. Uh, the marking is, is um, well, to start from the bottom, I guess. The marking, if we turn them all off, all the crosswalks go away. That's what the markings are. That's just visual. So visually, the crosswalks will disappear. Um, what I mainly concern myself with, the others here, they're, they're very specific, and you can really get into a lot of trouble messing with them too heavily. I'd recommend experimenting. But in this, in this example, if we take the offset under the All column and use our scroll wheel, you can see you scroll the wheel to change. Um, if you want to change by 10, you can hold Shift. Or if you want to change by 0.1 units, you can hold control, but without even holding anything, I can turn up this node to maybe 30. Let's see what 30 looks like. Now we've got this, this nice kind of large intersection with, with more of a sweeping left turn, right? Now this bus can actually make the left turn without having to, to be cramped in the, original, in the original space. If you ever want to set a node back to default, you can click on the node and you can hit this button here, reset to default. Boom, it goes back to how it was. You can see, look at this, look how far back the traffic was, was pushed. This turn became much, much wider because the start and end point of it became further away. So the radius of the turn was, was increased, I guess I'd say, right? So to, to put it back where it was, scroll the wheel up to 30. That's somewhat arbitrary. It'll, it'll be whatever you want when the time comes. Um, a reason why you might want, want to not expand a node completely, like I did here, like this node, I believe I changed it a little bit. If we reset it to default, you'll see it's it's based on what's around the node. Like we've got this Walgreens on the corner here. Uh, we've got this condo area. We've got a, a building there and a gas station there. If I increase this by too much, you'll notice that suddenly our sidewalk is kind of disappearing, right? Until finally we've got the building floating in the air. So a reason not to crank this up on every single intersection is that it does take up real, real estate in the area and inc it increases the, the the radius of these turns as well, which, which refines the sidewalk until it no longer exists. So I've chosen to do this one to 22, though this one is a similar set of roads going all the way up to 30 for that major highway interchange look. Speaking of highways, let me show you how, how you might be able to use node controller to really this gets crazy. Let's fix up a highway. Now take a gander at this. I would say it's a decent looking interchange on its own, right? I, I think the angles of things are nice and, and this is kind of a bread and butter partial cloverleaf for me. This is my favorite way to do it. 
Um, I've already taken the liberty of using intersection marking tool on each of the connections to really make it look, look marked up. But if you look closely, or maybe you don't even have to look that closely, if you look at the angles and the curves, you'll notice that it doesn't really make any sense. Like this, this is really weird and cramped looking. Uh, the angle that this connects at, the merge here is very strange. And these are also somewhat, these like major connections are kind of kind of weird looking. There's like an extra crosswalk overlaid over the intersection there. This turn, if you look at it from the driver's perspective, it's real squirrely looking. Like it gets kind of thinner and funny looking. I'd like to show you how to use node controller to iron out all these, all of these uh, issues, visual or otherwise. Like I said a moment ago, if we fix the angle that cars are turning at, it actually changes the path that the cars go on. I didn't state it explicitly, but cars can go faster if the turns are less sharp. So a reason that you might want to fix this and make it not so sharp and sudden is to make it so cars can move a little bit quicker. Now, one modification that, that was added, if you've used Node Controller the previous iteration, we are now on Node Controller 3. Node Controller 2 was good, but it lacks this visual component. And let me show you what that means. Um, one thing that you can do, this is all default right now. There's no, I've made no changes to this. It's all, it's all been reset to default. One thing you can do is shift click on these sides, watch this, and it automatically lines it up so that suddenly this road is, is essentially going straight. And if you continue down the line, it gets, it just gets better and better. Watch this. You can find your, your segments. I don't recommend clicking in, in uh, green or orange. Sorry, the green areas and the red areas are not to be clicked on. Orange sections are actually where there's where there's a node. I'm using move it to, to illustrate that. So I'm gonna look for the next node and I'm actually gonna refine that to where this one is. And you can follow the entire road. This is this is driving me crazy in the best way. You can you can go down the entire road and shift click on that inner that inner um, angle there and line it up the whole way down. And the result, if we do it on both sides, is amazing. Usually highways and skylines look kinda, I'm not sure how to say it, they look kinda off, off center, off kilter. Um, and this should also be lined up with this one in theory. Yep, it's the same. So now we've we've made this flat. You'll notice that the the margin goes in. That's just the network, the, the, um, uh, the sound barrier moves a little bit closer, and that's okay, but the lanes are straight right now. This is, you'll see the difference on the right side here. It really dips in hard and 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 goes at kind of a weird angle. If we do that to both sides, it's incredibly fast. And what this is really doing is it's changing the shift, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I could be, I could be, no, I'm right, that's what it is. So the blue here, rather than taking the shift and just, and just uh, guessing and kind of moving it around. I'm just scrolling around right now. You know, rather than doing that, we can, uh, let's reset it to default. Shift click, and then click on the one you want to line it up with, and you can do that to every node if you want to make it so your your interchange is, is uh, visually straight. I don't think this will speed the cars up too much, but this is just amazing to me. The fact that you don't have to flounder around and guess how far you have to shift the lanes and things like that. You can just shift click, and the lanes are, are shifted and everything's even. So that left lane traffic is now going straight through, which looks amazing. I, I've become used to the fact that the lanes look weird with the node system in Skylines, but that's a real quick and easy fix. The next thing you can do is look at this. These, these guys are all off center and weird. You can drag these to where you want them to go to kind of straighten them out. There's no benefit to having this angle be all crazy. It makes the markings look weird and it makes the cars have to drive at a weird angle. So let's flatten that out visually. Let's give this a little more space. We'll give this a little more space. And what this is affecting, this, this, what I'm doing, the dragging here is affecting the offset of each of these um, connections to the node. So I'm just increasing the offset kind of manually. And because I've already done the markings here, that's, that's fairly clean looking. I can kind of use the chevrons as a guide almost. You'll know that things are funky if, if it's too... First of all, if you get clipping like that, if you're getting Z fighting and clipping, that's no good, so you know it's something's off. Um, but, but the chevron also, your chevron on a merge or a split will look really clean if things are fairly even. 
So I'm a big fan of that. Um, one other thing to, to talk about is the slope. You can slope your intersection or leave it flat, which is amazing. This was included in the previous version of Node Controller, but I'm a huge advocate for hitting slope. By default, your connections are flat and the wider you make the node, the, the further that flat area extends. So I strongly recommend hitting slope when, when possible. And what that does is it, it starts the slope during the node, so it doesn't wait to the end. And it just looks quite a bit more natural. Like this one is, is a small node, but it's flat. Roads don't really, they don't flatten out all of a sudden when another road connects. That's not how things work. So with this one, it's been widened up a little bit. I've already done intersection marking tool, which is also part of unif the unified U UI. So they're both nested in here. Um, it's already marked up. It's been extended a little bit. The smoother you make it, the better to a point, I would say. But for highway, I like doing it visually and just kind of eyeballing the whole thing. Uh, one other button that you can hit just to perfect what you've done is this square button here. Make the ends straight. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that squared off looking button. It actually didn't do anything because I did a pretty good job. Uh, what it would really do, in my experience, is if something was off and you hit make the ends straight, it automatically refines it to that point, right? Um, it moved it back a little bit in a way I don't like, but if you're ever concerned that the that the node is angled in a way that's funny, if these two aren't if these two um, corners are offset too far from one another, that button can help to, to adjust that. Um, and that's you can do that to every single one of these, really. You know, you can you can also just hit that right off the bat. I should have said that first. If you hit that button, make ends straight. Watch me. So this is default. Other than the fact that we moved this one over earlier, so let's put it back. Shift click and then click the node. So we've shifted the lane so that it's straight through and, and very, very refined looking. This is all at a crazy angle and that's what's causing this ditch th effect. Um, we can slope the node to make it sloped and we can click that, uh, make ends straight. And that does most of it right there, honestly, straightening out the ends because the default setting on this is just not that great. The default setting on a highway connection, not so good. And then just extend these by a little bit. Look at that. Does not even take that much. Does not does not take that much to do. Another practical application of the whole thing. So here you can see that this angle is fairly good. This side is kind of a, a semicircle, starting from the node back here. We're going 90 degrees, and then another 90 degrees, and then we're connecting to the intersection. That's all well and good. But this road is kind of left left out and real funky looking. So to do the same thing we did, click the thing. Uh, we can hit the make ends straight button. That'll help shift it immediately. Um, I think that shift clicking this one and then clicking this one, look at that. So we shifted the road to the right. It knew what I was trying to do. I wanted to align this corner to this corner. Let me reset it so you can see it again. Look at how kind of sudden that corner looks, right? If you were approaching this in your car, it would be very awkward. It would be poor highway design, honestly. And this just gives you the control necessary to, to kind of combat the City Skylines node system and say, look, that default connection is no good. I want to offset that. Oh God. Oh God. What have I done? Let's try it again. Shift click and then click this one. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> okay. I'm going to reset it. I'm going to, the first time I said make ends straight. So now let's make the ends straight and let's see if it works. Yeah, okay. So apparently, maybe that was a glitch, maybe not, but make ends straight and then shift clicking this one and this one alleviated that issue. And now you can also widen this a little bit and then widen this one a little bit. Looking at the Chevron markings, I strongly recommend using intersection marking tool with this as well, just to help the appearance because without an, a marking here, if this weren't marked up, None of the, the, uh, not Chevron, but the, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. This thing, tell me in the comments what this is called. I'm going to call them slashes for now. That's not what they're called. Stripes. <laughs> stripes. Don't tell me in the comments what they are. Stop typing. Um, if the stripes weren't there and these, these dotted lines and these connectors weren't there, this would just be an empty black field. Just like all these intersections where there's just an empty black field. Um, now this one, 
you'll notice that the sidewalk, I, I, did the inter, I did intersection marking tool on this one. This one's a pretty advanced pattern, I'd say. I'd say that that's, there's a lot going on within the intersection marking tool. There's a lot of, of lines that have been drawn and a lot of uh, fillers and stuff, and it looks pretty good, but I'd like to go into node controller and really refine that further. So this is, I'm gonna hit the make ends straight button again, which seems to be a really good first option. And you'll notice what that did. I'm gonna reset it. Keep an eye on this one here, which is which is diagonal, and this one here, which is crazy diagonal. And the crosswalk is evidence of that as well. That's an intersection marking tool crosswalk. So let's hit make ends straight. And that immediately takes care of a lot of the issues. Now in this situation here, you'll notice there's this double crosswalk. Um, I want the crosswalk functionality to remain and I want to get rid of the vanilla crosswalk. So I'm taking note of the color here. I'm looking at the orange. So the orange, you don't have to memorize the number, but the color here makes it evident to me at least. And now we can go down and go to marking and turn that off. And now all you're seeing is the intersection marking tool crosswalk, which I've added on my own. I did that as part of the, the markings here and deactivated that vanilla, that nasty looking vanilla, weird looking crosswalk. And that's a pretty good result. I still might recommend widening this a little bit just to make the turns a little, a little smoother. Maybe bring this one back a little, oh, well. The key starts poking through there. But that's a really good way to go, you know. Um, pull this back until the texture starts to look weird. You can see the texture tears. Don't go nearly that far, but look at where the texture looks like it's okay. Getting a little tearing there, but it's not so bad. Um, we'll drag this one back a little ways to smooth everything out. Um, what else could be done? Let's see if, if we shift click this external one. <sighs> no. <laughs> so that's not, it's not always going to be the way to go. We can just zero that out and hit enter and it'll put it back to, to zero. Um, so that option will work in some situations in this kind of S-Bend situation. That shift clicking to, to fix the shift did not work. Um, also, let's see what this, a sloped version of this might look like. You can see that this, the grade on this hill is slightly steep. I could live with it, honestly. That's not that, that bad. But I would like to see what it looks like sloped. Wow. That might even be better. So if you remember earlier, I mentioned that sloping the intersection means that the slope can begin at the during the node rather than after the node. And if you look at this, we're going up fairly smoothly, I'd say. Sometimes if you do this too aggressively, you'll get flying cars. I don't have any vehicles. There's no traffic in this interchange currently, but flying cars may happen. So be aware of that. But yeah, bottom line is node controller is amazing. Um, I think that's everything that I use it for. I use it on this one over here as well, this, this um, single point urban inter interchange, which has traffic flowing through it. You can see that we fixed the offset of these to make them all flat, uh, to make this, this transition flat here. Another beautiful side effect of that is that this four lane highway, which usually has, usually everything centered and really funny looking. Now our merge lane, if you look at this, we're merging in, this actually looks like a merge where it actually looks like this lane is ending and it's gonna merge in. Normally this whole thing is centered and it looks like both outer lanes are merging in. So it just really helps with the, the appearance of things, the realism of things. If you've heard of a mod called um, City Skylines Urban Roads Tool, CSUR, I believe it's called, CSUR. Uh, this kind of gets the effects of CSUR without using hundreds of megabytes of, of RAM. Um, it's a very light mod, very easy on the system. I'd strongly recommend upgrading from the original node controller as soon as possible. This just adds so much visual, um, so many controls that can be used visually in the user interface. And it's color coded and it's beautiful and it makes things really, really easy with great results. Uh, everybody, thank you for watching. I've been Yumble. I appreciate you being here. Um, definitely leave a comment below, like the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos, check out my other tutorials. Um, I also stream on Twitch two days a week, at least two days a week, sometimes more, um, but I really appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next stream or the next video.